After being expelled from the forest where he lives, Woodpecker must enter a camp and defeat the insane traps of his greatest rival Buzz Buzzard in order to save the members of his team. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Woody Woodpecker Goes to Camp, from 2024. One morning in the forest, Woodpecker is in his treehouse ready to eat a pizza he has just stolen. Suddenly, he hears a loud sound and is startled, causing his juicy pizza to fall to the ground. Then the bird hears an extremely annoying noise and goes to investigate what is going on. Hiding behind a bush, Woodpecker spots Kyler and his team recording videos for social media. The boy says that he was challenged to survive in the middle of the forest, but he took his friends with him. Determined to send those humans back to the city, Woodpecker decides to disrupt the recordings and destroys everything he comes across, including the inflatable pool where some of Kyler's friends are cooling off. After being publicly humiliated and having his face burned, the influencer decides to take revenge and starts shooting at the bird with two paintball guns. However, the boy ends up destroying his entire dressing room and fails to hit his target even once. After knocking down Kyler's tent, Woodpecker ties his body up with the fabric and throws him far away. Seeing what that animal was capable of doing to their boss, the whole team decides to flee and, once again, Woodpecker manages to fulfill his mission of getting rid of the intruders who appear in his forest. Hours later, the bird has to go to the forest guard station and receives a lecture from the guard, who accuses Woodpecker of causing more damage to that community than humans ever could. As the bird has a habit of doing this repeatedly, Walters has no choice but to expel him, as all the animals have signed a petition saying they no longer want Woodpecker in the forest. Furious, the little guy says that this is his home and Walters reminds him that this is the home of all the animals, not just his. So until Woodpecker learns to work as a team and stops spreading chaos wherever he goes, he won't be welcome in the forest. On his way home to collect his things, the bird spots the Camp Woohoo sign and thinks it's a good idea to sneak in to see if he can finally learn what teamwork is all about. Among the dozens of children he meets, Woodpecker decides to approach Maggie because he notices that she is carving something out of wood. As he approaches, the bird wastes no time in grabbing a tree trunk to show off his talent. He then asks why these young people are together and Maggie reveals that they all have some special talent and have signed up for the camp to hone their skills. However, unlike her classmates, the young woman has yet to discover her true vocation. That's why she has ventured into various activities with the aim of discovering her talent. By then, Woodpecker is still not convinced that it's a good idea to stay at the camp, but that changes at lunchtime, when he discovers that he'll be able to eat for free every day. At this point, the animal discovers that Maggie is the daughter of the camp's owner and decides to stay by her side to take part in the wilderness games. As her camp has never won the competition, Maggie is not at all excited about taking part. However, it's too late, as the members of Camp Ura have just arrived. Zane and Angie are cousins and inherited that large plot of land from their ancestors. So they had to divide up the plot and build two rival camps. However, unlike his cousin, Zane is extremely rude to the children and doesn't allow any member of Camp Wuhu to invade his side of the lawn. That afternoon, Inspector Wally shows up and says he's there to make sure Angie has a chance to fix anything that's out of line so she doesn't lose her camping license. While her mother accompanies the inspector, Maggie takes Woodpecker to meet her great-grandfather, Obadiah Mallard. The man was a prospector and arrived in those lands during the gold rush with the intention of building a fortune. According to the stories, Obadiah became rich and bought that land so that his family could live and prosper. However, when his two sons came to join him, Obadiah perished and all his gold was lost. After their father's perishment, the two brothers began arguing about what to do with the land, so they divided the area into two different camps. Since then, Wu Fu and Hu Ra have become rivals and, because of this rivalry, the wilderness games were created. However, this only made things worse, because Hu Ra had always been champions. When he hears this story, Woodpecker says that this year the Wu Fu will win the games and starts poking around the museum. After picking up a fire extinguisher, the bird accidentally triggers the device and, after destroying the wooden wall, ends up in the game's room. The propulsion causes the bird to destroy several devices, but luckily it manages to get out unscathed. Maggie then appears and introduces Woodpecker to her friends. Among them is Mike, a teenager who devotes much of his life to studying birds. Seeing the bird right in front of him, the boy is thrilled and even more excited to join the camp. Meanwhile, in the Hoorah kitchen, Zane discovers that his cook has resigned and been replaced by Buzz Buzzard. During the conversation, the man realizes that this guy has a feud with the camp next door and tries to convince him to sabotage Angie's work. If the woman's camp is forced to close, Zane will be able to buy the land and turn the Hoo Ra into one of the largest camps in the country. However, 
Zane knows how much his cousin is in love with that camp and isn't willing to sabotage it. Before leaving, Wally finds Angie's camp several times, as he observes every little detail that is out of place. The problem is that the woman doesn't have enough money to pay all those fees, let alone fix every little detail that Wally pointed out. Meanwhile, Buzz Buzzard gets in touch with his partner and tells him that he needs to take possession of both sides of the land so that he can look for the treasure that is buried there. His first strategy consists of removing the woohoo from the game and then getting rid of Zane. That night, while he's getting ready for bed, Woodpecker receives a visit from Angie, who accuses him of causing chaos ever since he arrived. The woman tells the children that this could be the last year they spend their vacations at the camp, as Wally has only given Angie 24 hours to tidy up before the final inspection. But even this uncertainty can't stop the youngsters from taking part in the wilderness games. According to Angie, even though this is the last year of camp, teenagers need to learn to stand up to bullies instead of hiding from them, as this is a skill they will need to use for the rest of their lives. So the next morning, the youngsters start their training and work hard to acquire the physical skills needed to win the competition. However, Buzz Buzzard is determined to do his utmost to harm the children and tries to throw hundreds of fire ants into the camp to attack them. However, just as the animal is about to throw the capsule, Woodpecker throws a tire in his direction and the ants end up on Buzz's feet. While the teenagers train, Angie is committed to fixing up the camp and is proud to see the children doing their best. While the youngsters are in a canoe learning to paddle, Buzz begins to implement his plan to dump sewage into the lake. At that moment, Woodpecker is fishing and accidentally hooks the buzzard, which ends up being sucked into the vacuum cleaner and, when it manages to free itself, it dumps all the sewage on its own body. Determined to get rid of that bird, Buzz waits for the moment when all the children are going to the cafeteria and invites Woodpecker in for a chat. Then, when the little guy gets to the playroom, the buzzard starts destroying the place and, in an attempt to stop him, Woodpecker ends up causing even more damage. When he realizes that Angie is approaching, Buzz runs away and Woodpecker takes all the credit for destroying the room. The big problem is that Wally has just arrived at the camp to complete the inspection and refuses to give Angie more time to clean up the mess. Just then, Zane appears with his team and Woodpecker points to Buzz as the culprit behind the destruction of the games room. However, Zane says that Buzz is his new cook and would never do anything to harm the neighboring camp. So Wally decides to close the woohoo once and for all, but Woodpecker manages to turn the tables. He proposes that the camp should continue to operate until the day of the wilderness games. So, if the woohoo are able to beat their opponents, it will prove that they are worthy of remaining a camp. When he finds out that he has been chosen to be the judge of the competition, Wally accepts the proposal and Zane takes up the challenge. Now that they have an even greater motive, since the camp is at stake, the youngsters are sparing no effort during training and, with each passing day, they feel more prepared to defeat the hoorah. The next day, when the games begin, Wally gives the opening speech and explains how each race will work. All of the challenges will earn the winning team one point, except for the last race, known as the flag picket, which will be worth two points. The first duel is a canoe race and, as expected, the hoorah take the lead. The team is already completing the course when they realize that their opponents haven't even managed to get out of their seats. Thanks to this extremely easy victory, hoorah are already off to a great start and are confident going into the second race. During the wheelbarrow race, the woohoo give up halfway through and are once again easily defeated. The arm wrestling is all the more shameful because all the young people who belong to Angie's camp are defeated as soon as Wally blows his whistle. Seeing her opponent complete an obstacle course in less than two minutes, JJ thinks about giving up, but changes her mind when Maggie advises her to think of the obstacles as part of a game. Like a great gamer, JJ knows that she has to overcome those obstacles if she wants to get to the next stage, and she manages to complete the course at an even faster speed than her opponent. During lunchtime, Woodpecker starts a food war in the cafeteria and Angie is so happy with her team's score that, instead of drawing the children's attention, she ends up joining in the fun. After the break, the two teams return to the arena and Orson is chosen to take part in the ride the boar game. Like a little math genius, the boy does some calculations to figure out the best angle to hold on and stop himself from falling. This way, he can stay on the toy for 30 minutes and secure another point for his team. In the next challenge, which consists of throwing a potato as far as possible, Gus wins and the two teams are tied. Determined to stop the woohoo from winning the wilderness games, Buzz Buzzard decides to cheat and spills oil on the climbing wall. As he is a great bird expert, Mike is chosen to carry out this race on behalf of his team and quickly reaches the top. However, he ends up slipping because of the oil left by Buzz and the hoorah end up getting the score. When he realizes that his plan has worked, Buzz decides to continue his sabotage and pours chili sauce on the woohoo team's pies. 
However, when the youngsters were about to devour the sweets, Woodpecker rushed in and ate all the pies in one go. In this way, his team manages to win the race, but the bird soon realizes that there is something wrong with his stomach. At that moment, he breaks away from the rest of the group and flies towards the rubbish dump to throw everything out. Seeing his enemy approaching, Buzz Buzzard hides inside one of the baskets and ends up being burned by Woodpecker's flaming breath. Hours later, at night, the young people gather to take the penultimate test and Rose is chosen to tell the best horror story. The young girl, who has a great talent for writing macabre stories, leaves all the young people and adults present completely terrified. When he realizes that the other team is trembling with fear, Wally declares Rose the winner of the match before even hearing the rival team's story. Before going to bed, the Wu Hu meet to plan their next steps. Despite all the efforts of each member of the team, they are still one point behind the Hu Ra camp. However, as the last race is worth two points, the teenagers know they still have a chance of winning the wilderness games. Before going to bed, they are visited by Angie, who brings pizza for dinner and congratulates them on their excellent performance. Regardless of the outcome of the final race, which will take place the following day, the woman says she is very proud of all the team members and thanks them for giving their all in that competition. Meanwhile, Buzz Buzzard breaks into Zane's cabin and tries to convince him to cheat to ensure that the Wu Hu will be defeated in the competition. However, the man claims that his scouts don't need that to win the wilderness games. Even though Zane is very confident that his team will win, the doesn't want to risk his plan being ruined. Sitting on the roof of the camp, Woodpecker realizes that he is sad that the games are over, because after the camping period, he will have to part with his friends. Since arriving there, his main goal has been to get a teamwork medal so that he can prove to Ranger Walters that he deserves to live in the forest. However, now that he is about to complete this goal, the bird realizes that there is an emptiness in his chest. Just then, Woodpecker spots Buzz in the kitchen of the camp next door and decides to break in to steal a snack. Then, accidentally, he eavesdrops on the buzzard conversation with his accomplice and discovers that the man's real intention is to take the land and steal the gold hidden there. After hearing the truth, Woodpecker tries to sneak out, but accidentally knocks over some pots and draws Buzz's attention. When he finds the little guy with the red tuft, the buzzard doesn't think twice before trapping him in the freezer and Woodpecker will have to find a way to escape if he doesn't want to turn into a popsicle. The next morning, when the flag picnic is about to start, Maggie and her friends wonder where Woodpecker is, but they have to start the game without him. When they arrive at the fortress they have built, the Wu Hu team realizes that their tent has been knocked down and Zane assures them that he is not responsible for the destruction. Meanwhile, a delivery man arrives at Hu Ra's camp with some boxes for Buzz Buzzard and realizes that there's something wrong with the freezer. After opening the door, the man comes across Woodpecker who, luckily, is still alive. After recovering from his frostbite, the bird goes after Angie to tell her about Buzz's plans. But first he has to escape from the buzzard. Meanwhile, Maggie thinks about giving up on the last race, but when she receives encouragement from her team, she decides to continue even without a fortress to hide behind. After being elected team captain, Maggie has to think of a strategy to beat the opposing team. As they don't have a wall to protect their flag, the plan consists of distracting the Hu Ra and luring them into a trap. Once most of them are out of the game, the Wu Hu team will attack in greater numbers, so they will have a better chance of stealing the flag. The competition has started and Woodpecker is still in the camp kitchen fighting Buzz. After knocking down a shelf on top of the buzzard, the bird walks off quietly celebrating its victory, but ends up being captured once again. Realizing that he won't be able to get out of this mess on his own, Woodpecker decides to ask his friends for help. Thanks to Maggie's plan, the Wu Hu team manages to steal the opposing team's flag and now all they have to do is take it back to their base. Just as the teenagers were about to realize their victory, they receive a call for help through a beacon and Maggie soon realizes that Woodpecker is in trouble. Immediately, the young woman and her team rush to meet their friend and manage to arrive moments before the bird was eliminated. Seeing the children at the door, Buzz Buzzard gets distracted and Woodpecker takes the opportunity to tie him to a table. When he finds out that his friends have given up winning the wilderness games to save him, the little guy gets emotional and asks Maggie to check the dispensary. At that moment, the young woman finds numerous boxes full of mining equipment and then Angie and Zane appear. After discovering Buzz's criminal plans, the pair claim that there is no gold lost in those lands. However, while rummaging through the buzzard's trinkets, Maggie finds a piece of paper, which is actually the missing part of the treasure map. The other two parts are in the museum built in Obadiah's honor and Woodpecker runs to get them. Together, the three parts form a complete map and Orson discovers that, through an overlay, it is possible to find the exact place where the gold was buried. After hearing the solution to the riddle, 
Buzz grabs a shovel to start digging and locks all the doors so that the group can't leave the kitchen. So Maggie comes up with the idea of using a fire extinguisher so that Woodpecker can escape through the chimney. And then he opens the door to free his friends. The group quickly sets out to find Buzz and discovers that he is fleeing by helicopter with the treasure chest. Darren, his accomplice, is the one flying the aircraft and Woodpecker goes after them. While the bird attacks the criminal, the children team up to recover the trunk and, when the helicopter takes off, Maggie ends up being taken away because she's trapped. When he sees his friend in danger, Woodpecker immediately goes to help her free herself and ends up being hit on the head. During the fall, Maggie manages to catch him, but Buzz Buzzard escapes with the treasure. When he wakes up to find that the gold has been taken, Woodpecker is furious and starts pecking at the statue of Obadiah. Then everyone discovers that building a statue was the strategy used by the old man to hide his gold. During the flight, Buzz decides to open the trunk and notices that he has been tricked, as the box is full of rocks. When he realizes that teamwork is what led them to find the treasure, Zane decides to apologize to his cousin and make up with her. Now that she's rich, Angie is able to pay all the fines and make the necessary repairs to her campsite. He then asks what Zane intends to do with his half of the gold and the man suggests that they build a single camp together. After removing the strip that divides the two plots in half, the two cousins announce the debut of the new camp called Wu Hu Ra. Thanks to their excellent teamwork, all the members of the camp receive a medal, including Woodpecker. After saying goodbye to his friends, the bird returns to the ranger station and shows Walter his beautiful medal. That afternoon, Darren and Buzz Buzzard suffer a helicopter accident and manage to survive, but end up being caught by the police. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.